management. The first thing you can do is you can accept or ignore the risk. You say, the risk is not big enough to worry about. And frankly, if you were, ever going, to, if you were going to do this formally, then you would look at two different elements. You'd look, A, at what's the likelihood of the problem occurring, and B, how serious would it be if it happens. And having done that, you can say, actually, you know what? The risk of that problem is not so significant that I need to worry about it. So, for example, what's the risk of failing to file clients' tax returns by the deadline if we miss? The maximum penalty is 100 quid. I'm not going to put too many procedures in place because if the worst comes to the worst, I'll pay the 100 quid. You could decide that. That's accept or ignore. The second way of dealing with business risk is you could choose to transfer the risk or outsource it. So a lot of people decide, hey, you know what, when a client asks me a tax problem that goes beyond what I'm comfortable dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, I will put that to a tax specialist. It might be a local tax specialist, it might be their PI, not the PI, their uh, uh, tax investigation insurer specialist, it might be something like the tax advice network that I run. That means you don't come to me, you go on the web and you choose one of the tax specialists in your area with the expertise that you require, you or your client go directly to them. Yeah, I'm just, somebody called us the tax dating agency. So that's transferring or outsourcing. You can mitigate or manage the risk. Large firms do that by putting in place what they call their four eyes policy. Nothing goes out without at least two people seeing it. They try and mitigate or manage the risk by doing that. The sole practitioners are small.